What's up my stat stars? In this video, I'm gonna break down the 2024 AP Statistics free response question number five, dealing with baseball cards. Now this is a multifocal problem where it focuses on basically exploring two variable data, but it also looks at conducting a hypothesis test based on that data as well. So let's dive into the problem. All right, baseball cards are trading cards that feature data on a player's performance in baseball games. Michelle is at a national baseball collector's convention with approximately 20,000 attendees. She notices that some collectors have both regular cards, which are easily obtained, and rare cards, which are harder to obtain. Michelle believes there's a relationship between the number of months a collector has been collecting baseball cards and whether the majority of the cards, cards appearing more often in their collection, are regular or rare. She obtains information from a random sample of 500 baseball card collectors at the convention and records how many months they have been collecting baseball cards and whether the majority of the cards in their card collection are regular or rare. Here are the results in a two-way table. So across the top, we see the months. Now you'd think months is a quantitative variable, but not when we put into categories fewer than six months, six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20 or 21 or more months. And then we see the other category, the other variable of, do you collect regular baseball cards, the majority of your collection or majority of rare baseball card collection? Now, there are multiple parts to this question, but the first part is gonna ask us a couple of probability questions. The first one says, if one collector from the sample is selected at random, what is the probability that the collector has been collecting baseball cards for 11 or more months and has a majority of regular baseball cards? So we're looking for 11 or more months and has been collecting majority regular baseball cards. So I'm gonna highlight everything that fits that bill. So right here, these 71 people, they have a majority of regular baseball cards and they are 11 to 15 months, which by definition is 11 or more. These 76 people, they collect regular baseball cards and they've been collecting for 16 to 20 months, which again, by definition is 11 or more. These 112 people, they've been collecting regular baseball cards and they've been collecting for 21 or more months, which again, by definition is 11 or more. So those three numbers are all meeting the qualification of this problem, 11 or more months collecting and has a majority of regular baseball cards. So here's my work for that. I'm gonna take the 71, the 76, and the 112. I'm gonna add them together. So 259 total people fit the bill of 11 or more months collecting and collecting regular baseball cards divided by the 500 total people in the sample. There is no given, no condition here whatsoever. So my denominator does not change. And I get about 51.8% or 0.518 is the probability. All right, the next question is a conditional probability because we see that amazing word given. So given that a randomly selected collector from the sample has been collecting baseball cards for fewer than six months, now that means we're only allowed to look at this column right here because we're given that they're collecting for fewer than six months. We can't look anywhere else because everywhere else they've been collecting for more than six months. So given that condition, was the probability that the collector has a majority of regular baseball cards? So again, we're gonna be looking at these 80 people right here. Now, following the formula, here's how I'm gonna solve the problem. First, I'm gonna write it out. We'll find the probability that the, major, the majority of their collection is regular, given, so we see that line right here, given fewer than six months of collecting. Now, the formula for conditional probability shows that in the numerator, we have to do both. Majority regular and fewer than six months. That's gonna be the 80 out of 500. And the denominator is just the condition, fewer than six months, that's 91 out of 500. Now, when we do that math, when we divide 80 divided by 500 and 91 divided by 500, when we multiply by the reciprocal, those 500s are gonna get canceled and we get 80 out of 91. Now, you actually did not need to use that formula for this problem as long as you understand the two-way table. I'm only allowed to look right here because that's the condition, fewer than six months. And of the people in that table or in that column I just highlighted, 80 of the 91 are made or collect regular baseball cards for the majority of their collection. So 80 out of 91 is my final answer at 0.879 or 87.9% probability. All right, the next question says, Michelle believes there is a relationship between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and which type of card is the majority in the collection, regular or rare. Name the hypothesis test Michelle should use to investigate her belief and do not perform the hypothesis test. We're just naming the test, and then part two down below wants us to state the null and alternative of the test. Now, first off, we're looking at a two-way table for categorical data. Again, the categorical data is the two variables. Do you collect rare or regular baseball cards for your majority, and how long have you been collecting in terms of these different categories? Uh, you know, fewer than six months, six to 11, and so forth. 
Now, anytime we see that, we're thinking of a chi-squared test. Chi-squared tests are for categorical data. Now, is it an independence test or a homogeneity test or goodness of fit test? Well, goodness of fit test is for only one variable. We have two variables. And homogeneity is when we have multiple samples. We're trying to see if the distribution is the same across those samples. If you go back to the original problem here, it said Michelle only had one sample of 500 people. She just asked them two separate questions. And the questions were, you know, do how long have you been collecting? And do you have regular or rare in your collection for the majority? So this is going to be a chi-square test for independence. Now, it's really careful that you not only say that, a chi-square test for independence, but we also make sure that we give the context. This is a chi-square test for independence between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and which type of baseball cards the majority in the collection regular or rare. Now, not that I literally just copied that from the problem. You know, go back to what it says in part C. Most of that is just me copying, but I started off by saying this is going to be a chi-square test for independence. Now, the hypotheses are quite simple here. The null hypothesis would be that there's no association. You could also say independence as well. There is independence, but independence means no association. So there's no association, but don't forget the context between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and the which type of card is the majority in the collection, regular or rare for those at this convention. So keep in mind that you got to have that context. And again, most of it's just copying what's in the problem. Now, the alternative is what she's wondering, that there is an association between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and which type of card is the majority in the collection, regular or rare, for those at the convention. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad as long as you remember those simple ideas. Now, the final part, D, is after completing the hypothesis test described in part C, Michelle obtains a p-value of 0 0.0075. So she did all the work. You don't have to do any of it. Assuming the conditions for inference are met, what conclusion should she make about her belief? Justify your response. Well, I want to give kind of three things here. So first, I want to say, well, her p-value of 0 0.0075 is less than other either 1% or 5%, it really didn't give a significance level, but whether we use 1% or 5%, we're definitely underneath that, so she should reject the null hypothesis. So there's my rationale, right? She has a low p-value, and that low p-value is going to cause me to reject the null hypothesis. Now, what does this mean? It means there is significant evidence of an association between the number of months spent collecting baseball cards and which type of card is in the majority in the collection, regular or rare, for those at this convention. Now, that last part's actually pretty important for those at the convention. Remember, her sample was only taken from the collectors at the convention, so whatever she learned from her sample, and in this case, we're learning that there is an association between how long you've been collecting and what type of cards you have in your collection, but because her sample only came from those at the convention, she could only say this relationship is true for those at the convention. That's something times a lot of kids overlook. So that's it. That's it for question number five. Overall, it really, really wasn't too bad. Hopefully, those two probability questions were pretty simple for A and B. And then C really just wanted you to focus on the chi-squared test for independence. And you didn't have to do the test. All you do is give the, you know, give the name of it and state those hypotheses. And then in question D here, they give you the p-value, which is awesome. Just making sure that you know what a low p-value means and how to interpret that with a proper conclusion. All right, that's it for question number five. I really hope you nailed it and got a good score on it. And I hope everybody did well in the AP test this year.